Hi everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Classic Car Feature, in which you'll know the evolution of radios in a classic car. This feature enhanced the driving experience in vintage cars. If you are a classic era lover, you will surely enjoy this video, so let's tune in. Today, we are featuring push-button radios in classic cars. We know how much radio helped make long journeys easy through music, news, or other entertainment shows. The combination of highways with radio music is evergreen. But have you ever noticed that these intuitive and perfect radios used in our modern cars were not always this way? Rather, when the radios first appear in classic cars, some concerned natives and lawmakers tried to ban the radios for being a distraction and too rowdy for a driver. Initially, the radios were not viable in cars due to electrical interference from the engine, causing static and could only be used when the engine was off. However, Chevrolet introduced the first car radio in the 1920s. After that, the radios in classic cars used to be costly and very bulky, with heavy batteries, antennas, and speakers that rarely fit in the car. So, it wasn't a convenient thing to carry since it was like bringing a live orchestra along for a ride. Later, in 1930, Motorola introduced the first commercial car radios, using vacuum tube technology to send and receive high-frequency and shortwave signals to a very long distance. This radio took up about 10 liters of cargo space and received AM signals only. It was housed in a wooden case and powered by two high-voltage batteries stashed under the passenger seat in the car's battery. It cost $130 at a time when an entire Ford Model A cost $540. These radios were not annoying but innovative by adding buttons and dial features that made them easy to process for drivers and passengers. However, AM radios were plagued by static interference and poor sound quality. So, in the 1950s, FM appeared as another breakthrough in the radio industry in classic cars with relatively low prices compared to previously available AM radios. Although the late 1930s tested FM prototypes, Blaupunkt, a German company, produced the first FM radio for cars in 1952. As a result, by 1963, 60% of the cars produced in America were equipped with radios. The first push-button radios were called Mystic Eyes and had only four preset stations. The invention of push-button tuning allowed drivers to select their favorite station without taking their eyes off the road. These radios were mounted on the dashboard and operated with push buttons. In addition to providing music, the radio was also a news and entertainment source. It was a common sight in classic cars of the day and was a great way to stay connected while on the road. The later version of push-button radios had a select a tune feature, which allowed the driver to manually select music or a radio station. They were also often equipped with a tone control that allowed the driver to adjust the sound quality. As technology advances, push-button radios have also kept up with the times. Today, they come with a range of features that were once unimaginable. For instance, modern push-button radios often have Bluetooth connectivity, allowing drivers to stream music from their phones or other devices. Some also come with touchscreen displays, GPS navigation, and voice command options. Despite these modern features, many people still appreciate the simplicity and nostalgia of classic push-button radios. Some even argue that the tactile buttons and knobs make them more intuitive and easier to use than modern touchscreens. Push-button radios have come a long way since their early days in classic cars. From bulky and expensive devices that could only receive AM signals, they have evolved to become sleek and feature-packed devices offering various connectivity options. Despite this evolution, push-button radios remain a beloved part of automotive history and an essential part of many classic cars. So, there you have it. Push-button radios have a rich history in classic cars. Although initially considered a distraction, they continued evolving and improving. They provided a unique look and feel to the car, and old push-button radios are still sought after by classic car enthusiasts today. Thanks for tuning into today's episode of Classic Cars. We hope you enjoyed learning about push-button radios. Remember to tune in for the next video for more classic car fun. Subscribe to our channel to get regular awesome video recommendations. We always love what you say, so don't forget to tell us in the comment section below. Until then, stay well.